Hello everybody and welcome back to DCAF's video tutorial series. Uh, today we are going to start something a little bit new. Uh, in the previous tutorials I have gone and uh, done generic things with the default cube and a very basic example. <coughs> so uh, from now on we're going to be working on a project. We're going to be making a Boeing 737 Lufthansa uh, livery, livery, however you pronounce that. So here is a blank model that I've developed over, oh, I don't know, I probably put 20 hours into this model, uh, modifying it from its original version um, into what this is now. So let's uh, look at uh, what we're going to need. First, we're going to need uh, references. So to figure out what we're actually going to make, here is a nice picture of a Boeing 737 and then Lufthansa uh, paint scheme. And so there's a few things that we want to uh, no notice that we're going to be needing. Number one, uh, this is a mostly white model, but there are some uh, splashes of blue and gray. So we're going to need to paint our model to look like that. Then there's also decals. Uh, decals are basically anything graphics wise that we want to include. So in this case we're going to want to include the airline name, probably going to include this text right here. Now, this is a 500 model but we'll make this into a 600. Uh, we're going to want to make this tail art here and we're probably going to want to put the country flag in there and maybe some of these other details up front. So this is actually uh, quite a few things to pay attention to. So let's start off with just uh, getting the base uh, of the airplane ready. So to do that, what we're going to do is put in the gray down below here, and then we're going to make the tail blue and white. So let's start off by saving this. File save as, and let's go and save it into here. and get rid of the blank here. Uh, there we go. So when I uh, name my airplanes, um, I ha typically have blank as a second scheme here, uh, the model name, and then the version. This allows me to go back and say, oh, uh, I made an update to the blank, and so I'm going to need to update all these other models. Now, that is a very, very hard way to do this. Um, in general, I've found that you want to spend the time and effort getting your blank model all prepped and ready before you do any um, painting and things like that. So that's uh, going to be a bit advanced if you're just starting off. So look for people who have already made blanks, uh, people who put the time and effort in. I'm going to be releasing a 737 new generation or next generation uh, repaint pack in some time for YS Flight. And in that, it'll, I'll have these blank models so that people can then go ahead and take the time and make the, uh, the, the models that I just didn't feel like working on or didn't have the time to do. Uh, I've also done a CRJ family uh, blank pack which has an updated CRJ 200, 700, 900 and some people have already started taking that 900 and making it into a making a Delta um, Airlines paint scheme. So uh, let's begin uh, getting this model ready. So first uh, let's work on the tail because that's going to be a little bit more challenging. So one thing to notice is that this tail has a white strip going down the leading edge. And so we're going to need to address that. Um, and that's fairly straightforward to do. So we're going to go into edit mode here. Let's bring this toolbar up a little bit. There we go. And go into edit mode on that piece. So here we have uh, the edit mode. Um, I'm keeping this in textured mode right now just because I don't want to have to see through. Uh, the model. And I'm going to go into the number one viewpoint mode and get rid of this transform properties window. 
when you're doing all the cuttings, you don't really need that window open. That's uh, some space that you could really use for other things. Okay, so let's start off by talking about how we're going to cut this. Uh, what we need to first do is select the things that we're going to cut. Now, if I was only going to work on one side, I'd want to have uh, this view solid uh, option selected, and I would just go ahead and select a few of these uh, polygons and then make my cuts. But if we spin this around, we'll notice the other side doesn't have anything selected. That's good if we only want to work on one side. But because this um, appears to have it wrapping around to both sides, uh, what we're going to want to do is select everything. So rather than select individual polygons, we're just going to deselect all and select everything. That way, both sides of the uh, tail are selected. And we'll go back into the first viewpoint. So next we're going to look and see, well, how much of this is actually white. And it's actually a fair amount. Uh, one thing we have to take into consideration is that this airplane is at an angle to us, so it's not going to be quite that thick. It's going to be a little bit less. So I am just going to do a rough estimate here, bring up my exact knife tool, and I am going to start laying this out. Probably something like this. Now, I finished that off by pressing the enter or return key, and if we look to the other side, we see that the cut appeared over here as well. And that's because all of both sides were selected. So any polygon that is selected, any uh, edge, anything that is selected that has a cut passed through it will be cut. So that's how we can, just by looking at one side, get everything done at the same time. So uh, I've noticed here that my cut actually is a little bit too thick here. So I'm going to go ahead and undo this. There we go. And let's go ahead and retry. Don't be afraid to take uh, a while working on this. That's not the right one, so let's go back and cut again. And take some fiddling around. I'm not going to try to disguise that fact. Um, it's going to take a little while to get everything the way you want it to be. But once you get it like that, it's uh, very, very nice. So, now we have our mesh cut. We have the cuts where we want them to be. So now it's time to go ahead and paint this. Well, how do we know what color this is? Uh, we could go and do some research, or if we want to just get a quick, rough estimate, we want to use a program that will allow us to identify individual pixels to determine their RGB colors. So I'm going to use a Mac specific, uh, it's free with Mac, it comes automatically installed, it's called Digital Color Meter. And this allows me to just drag my mouse around, Oops, there's a little window, and I can see uh, all these different colors. And I can play around with how big the aperture size is, so I can get a pretty good average color here. Now one thing to note here is that I have this as RGB as percent. You know, if you can you can see right in here, I have the percents for all of these things. So I'm going to go ahead and jot that information. Down. So we have 4.5, 6.7, and 29.1. And now let's go back into Blender and go to our vertex paint mode. Now I don't have to press the F key because it's already showing me all the individual faces. And to save time, what I'm actually going to do is just select everything and I'll paint the entire tail here this blue color. And then I'll go back and paint the white here. Since there are more blue faces, it will take more time to try to individually select them all. It's easier just to paint the whole thing white and then go after the smaller number of polygons that are going to be white. So let's click on the color here to open up our control dialog 
to select colors. And what we can do here is type in uh, the decimal percent, decimal uh, point percentages for the colors. So we had 4.5%. So that's going to be 0 0.045. Go ahead, hit return. Then this is next one is 6.7%. So 0 0.067. And this last one is 29.1%. So it's 0 0.291. And there we have our color. So I hit return to get our color selected. And since we have all of our faces selected, I'm just going to go ahead and apply that color. And there we have our lovely model tail. All right, now let's go ahead and do the other side of this and just do the uh, white that goes along the leading edge. Let's go back into vertex paint and what we're going to do first is select the color that we want. Uh, we're not going to go directly to white. We're going to go a little bit off white. So this first default color here is pretty good. Uh, it's not amazing. So we're going to bump these to 0.9 each. There we go. And then we're going to right click to select uh, a polygon and then shift right click on all the other polygons that need to be turned white. So now let's zoom in on the top here. And there we go. So let's set those colors and go back to object mode. And there we go. There is our tail. Now, this, the rudder right here, let's go back to our base model. You can see that that is entirely blue, except for the decal, which we'll take care of later. So let's just go ahead, go into vertex paint. It's got everything selected already. That's wonderful. And now we want to make it the same color as this blue. Well, how can we do that without having to go and retype the colors in? Because that's just annoying. Well, if we go in, we can click on this sample button. And we can click on our regular tail here. And it'll automatically draw that color in, which is wonderful. So in just a couple clicks, we can make our entire tail that color. So that's, this seems like a good stopping point. Uh, next time, uh, we're going to work on work on doing the base, the belly of the uh, airplane, turning that into a gray color. So I hope to see you then.